Hey there, I'm Tim Warner, a trainer with CBT Nuggets. Welcome to this CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Microsoft Link Server 2010 Link Topologies. In this Micro Nugget, I'm going to explain to you the major concepts behind link topology. Topology refers to your physical orientation of your servers and your server roles, which refer to the logical software bits, how those are arranged within that topology. One of the big questions you have if you're considering a link server deployment and if you're wondering what link server is, see my other micro nuggets on the subject, is are you going to go with link standard edition or enterprise edition? You can go online to the link website and view a blow by blow comparison of what you get based on those editions. Each is going to have their own client access license or CAL associated with it. You'd be surprised how much functionality you do get with the standard though. Most of the lion's share of what you get in enterprise. Really the big differentiator friend is whether you have a requirement for high availability. For instance, one of the server roles, as we'll learn, is the front end server. And this is the main box that your link users come into your system when they log in and they're authenticated and they register with link. It's through their assigned front end pool. Now, pool is important here. You immediately think clustered or load balanced boxes. Well, standard edition, your front end pool can consist of only one box. If you have a requirement for high availability, availability and you're going to use load balancing, that's going to require binding these guys under a single host name and a single virtual IP or VIP. That's going to require enterprise edition and that applies across the board for all your server roles. Now with regard to topology, Link uses the site concept. Now this is on paper at first blush redolent of what we have as Active Directory administrators with AD sites, but as it happens your Link topology and your Link site topology specifically can look very different from what your AD site topology is. They're not one and the same, okay? Here's the deal. With Link, you have one central site, and that central site is going to be where most of your Link functionality resides. So the bulk, your conferencing, your enterprise voice, your IM, all that stuff happens at the central site. It makes sense that you would put your central site at the physical campus where most of your users reside. Link supports a hub and spoke architecture in which that one central site can be associated with one or more branch sites. The idea here is that we have a remote location with a WAN link to the central site. Now that WAN link is important because, like I said, the main functionality in Link is contained in the central site. So if you have a branch location and you just can't get reliable WAN connectivity between the central site and that branch, you know what you'll need to do in your topology? You'll need to break out another central. You can do that with Link. You can contain multiple centrals and multiple branches in a single deployment or a single topology of Link Server 2010. But like I said, the idea is that the branch office is a remote location, derives most of its functionality from the central site. But what you'll want to do to maintain your voice resiliency, that is, what happens if that WAN link goes down for some reason? You'll need to deploy what's called a survivable survivable branch appliance or SBA. This is a hardware appliance that gives basic link functionality, registration. It becomes the branch user's registration pool and also gives them PSTN connectivity so they can still make and receive PSTN calls if the WAN link is down. I cover all this in great detail in my full training course for CBT Nuggets on Link Server 2010 administration and config. The Link Server 2010 planning tool is invaluable for planning your deployment because there are so many moving parts. You can download this. It's a small desktop application. Lots of other cool resources available at the Microsoft download site and the Link server site. Finally, we have in Link 2010 the, an application called Topology Builder. This is absolutely required when you're deploying your topology initially and also you use it when you expand or contract later. If you want to add another server to your front end pool, you make that change in Topology Builder first. If you're going to decommission a server somewhere, you go to Topology Builder and decommission, then you remove the box from your topology. The 
topology builder and the underlying topology feeds into a SQL Server backend database called the Central Management Store, or CMS database. That holds the intelligence of the link environment. Let's now consider server roles. Like Exchange 2010, like Windows Server 2008, the idea is the product is big enough to support separate roles. SharePoint is like this too, as a matter of fact. Separate roles on separate boxes. You do that for load balancing, distributing processing power, and giving your users a better experience. You can do it for security. Bottom line, as you see, there's quite a few server roles here. Don't worry, don't think you have to deploy every role on a separate box. Don't even think you have to deploy every role. Not all of these are required. You definitely need at least one front end server, as we've talked about. Whether you're going to deploy SQL Server on a separate box depends upon whether you're Standard Edition or Enterprise. Standard Edition uses the SQL Server Express. If you're going to do Enterprise, you have to have a separate instance of SQL Server. The mediation server role is actually co-located with the front end to save you some money <laughs> and save you some spare resources. However, if you're doing a lot of POT stuff and PSTN Enterprise Voice, stuff, you may need to break out mediation into a separate pool. Mediation transcodes audio streams from the link client to the public switch network and back again. AV conferencing supports, you guessed it, all of your conferencing. There can be some heavy lifting involved with conferencing. Larger scale instant messaging, application sharing, data sharing, video streams, it's enough to warrant a separate role. That can easily be co-located as well in the front end server. Director is truly an optional role. It's primarily for security. It serves as a next hop between the internal network where your front end servers reside and your edge server that you have on your demilitarized zone or screen subnet. Now what is the edge server role? This allows us secure remote access. So if you have remote or roving link users who are out on the public internet, they can make a secure connection with their link client and interact with other link users inside the corporate firewall seamlessly. Finally, monitoring and archiving. These can be easy Easily, because they're fairly low overhead server roles, can be co-located on the same box, are used for troubleshooting, compliance, and auditing. In other words, all of your instant message traffic can be archived for compliance and security purposes, resources, metadata concerning conferencing, all that stuff as well. So there's a lot to digest. Like I said, the next step would be to check out my full training course on Link Server 2010 Admin because we use these roles and you see them in action. I hope that this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.